in the sixth edition. And it says that a newborn baby is 21 inches in length. And weighs 6 pounds, 9 ounces. All right. And they would like you to convert that into metric units. All right. So let's, let's focus on converting the inches into uh, meters. And then if the meters is not... Um, the best unit will try something else. All right, so in order for us to convert from inches to meters, we have to know the relationship between inches and meters. And one inch, this is something you'll need to memorize, one inch equals to need to do is come up with our plan of action to solve the problem. Well, we want to convert from inches to centimeters to meters. Now he said, why don't we go directly from inches to meters? Well, I don't know the relationship between inches and meters. I know the relationship between inches and centimeters. And so the next step would be, well, do you know the relationship between centimeters and meters? Yes. This is the advantage of the metric system. The metric system, when we say one centimeter, centi means 10 to the negative 2. And this is the best way to memorize the metric system. I know some of you have memorized it that 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. But this gets difficult when we start talking about things like nanometers, 1 nanometer, which is when we talk about wavelengths of light, we'll use it. It's better to use what the metric system, system intended, which is centi means 10 to the negative 2. Nano over here means 10 to the negative ninth. All right? If you'll do this system, it'll help you out in the long run. All right, so now we know the relationship between centimeters and meters. We're ready to solve our problem. So what we do is we take the 21 inches. We put a multiplication symbol and a quotient bar. We want to get rid of the inches, and we want to be left with centimeters. That's what we're doing here, inches to centimeters. So we look at our uh, equality up here, and we need inches in the denominator. So we're going to divide both sides of this equality by one inch. When we do this, this side becomes one. And we know that like a number seven times one equals seven. Well, because this conversion factor equals 1, it's, it's like saying if I take 7 multiplied by this conversion factor, uh, I will get the same value as 7. It will be a different unit but, and a different number, but it won't be any longer or any shorter. So that's what conversion factors do for us. It doesn't change the amount we have. The baby is still 21 inches long. All that's happening is we're converting the inches into centimeters. All right. Step number two, we need to convert the centimeters into meters. So here's our relationship between centimeters and meters. So let's erase this. And what do we need to divide both sides of this equality by to get centimeters in the denominator? Well, one centimeter. This side becomes one again. That tells me this is a true conversion factor. And so I get 10 to the negative 2 meters over 1 centimeter. All right. So now I am ready to, uh, well, let's watch the units cancel out. The centimeters cancel here, and the centimeters cancel here in the denominator. And so what I'm ready to do now is to get my calculator out and calculate what the actual answer is going to be. Now, if, if you need a scientific calculator for this class, and how you know it's a scientific calculator, there should be a key on the calculator that looks like this. EE, -E, if you have a Texas instrument, or if you have a sharper Casio, it's EXP. In the Texas instrument, it's usually kind of over on the left-hand side, maybe the second column, about midway down or something like that. So how do you put this in on your calculator? You say 21... All right. Uh, multiply that by 2.54, because this is in the numerator. All right. You don't need to divide by 1, because it's the same number. And then multiply it by the 10 to the negative 2. Now, here is how you should put it in on your calculator. You 1 times 
times. Then you look for, oops, look, I made a mistake here. It's 1, then you look for the exponential key. So on the calculator, it's 1, E, E, and then put in the, not the, the subtraction key, but the negative key, negative 2. So this function on your calculator, it may be a second function. It may be above the primary key, like you'll see it above the key. That means you have to hit the second function button, which is somewhere in the upper register up at, towards the top of the calculator. Hit that first and then hit the EE. -E. All right. So 21 times 2.54 times 1 EE -E negative 2. You hit equals or enter and we get 0.5334 meters. All right, how many significant figures should we have in our final answer? Well, this is a definition, this is definition. We only had two significant figures in our measurement here, so we should only have two in our final answer. So we, one, two, we look at the three, it's less than five, so my final answer is 0.53 meters. All right, let's look at um, the uh, mass of the baby. Six pounds, nine ounces. Let's convert that over into grams. How about grams? All right. What I know about grams is there's 454 grams equals one pound. All right. So we have a six pound, ba six pound nine ounce baby. Well, one of the first things I probably need to do is convert the ounces to pounds. So. Let's do that first. Uh, let's move over to the next page. All right. Six pounds, nine ounces. And I know that there's 454 grams equals one pound. That's the one I have memorized. All right. So I also know that there's 16 ounces. Oops. 16 ounces equals one pound. So the first thing I want to do is convert the nine ounces into pounds. 9 ounces times, I want the ounces to go away, I want to be left with pounds. I divide both sides of my quality by 16 ounces. And so I have 1 pound over 16 ounces. Oops, why am I doing that again? Alright, so 9 divided by 16. 0. 0.5625. Okay, I'm going to add that to the 6 pounds, so now I have 6.5625 pounds, all right? And then I know that um, 1 pound is 454 grams. So I've divided both sides of this equality up here by 1 pound. So take this um, 6.5625 and multiply that by 454 and hit enter. We get 2,000, uh, 2,000, oops, 979 grams. Well, that's a large number. Nobody wants to deal with a number that large, especially when we only have really one significant figure here, which means there's only one significant figure here. That means there's only two significant figures in this number, so we only have um, two significant figures in this number. So let's convert the 2,979 grams into kilograms. So we have to know the relationship between a kilogram and a gram. One kilogram is equal to 10 to the third grams. Kilo means 10 to the third. So we divide both sides by 10 to the third grams down here. That makes this our conversion factor. So one kilogram over 10 to the third grams and we get 2.979 gram or kilograms, kilograms. Now there's only two significant figures, one, two, oops, and the seven is greater than five, so that rounds this nine up to a ten, which rounds this uh, two up to a three, so my final answer is 3.0 kilograms as the mass of the baby. All right, I hope that helps, and that's the end of this mini lecture.